Properties of rational numbers. There are a lot of definitions today, so you're going to have to stop, pause, and take some notes, okay? Here we go. Commutative property. The numbers change order. And what I mean is, when you look at the numbers on one side of the equal sign compared to the numbers on the other side of the equal sign, they are not the same. It's the same numbers, but the order is not the same. 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2. What are the numbers? 2, 3, 3, 2. The order is different, okay? 4 times 5 equals 5 times 4. Say the numbers. 4, 5, 5, 4. The order is different. This is an example of the commutative property of addition because they're addition problems. This is an example of the commutative property of multiplication because it's a multiplication problem. The next property, the associative property. The order does not change when you read the numbers on either side of the equal sign. The grouping, the parentheses, that's the grouping, changes. Here's an example. First, let's just say the number so you can see that the order doesn't change. On this side of the equal sign, 2, 5, 8. On this side of the equal sign, 2, 5, 8. It didn't change like it did up here, okay? But the grouping here, 2 plus 5 has the parentheses. Here, 5 plus 8 has the parentheses. So who we're adding together first changes. And this is the associative property of addition because it's all addition. Now let's look at the next one. 3 times 2 times 1 equals 3 times 2 times 1. The order again did not change, but look who's grouped together. Here 2 times 1 is grouped together, here 3 times 2 is grouped together. So the grouping has changed. This is an example of the associative property of multiplication, since it's a multiplication property problem. Here's a way to remember. Commutative property starts with a C, O. The C stands for change, the O stands for order. So when it's commutative property, the numbers change order. The associative property is the same order we change the grouping. Here are some more properties. Identity properties. The identity properties, you need to think about what you add or multiply a number by to end up with the identical number you started with. The additive identity is zero because five plus zero is five. Negative eight plus zero is negative eight. X plus zero is X. I add zero and I get the identical number I started with or the identical thing. If it was more than this, it would still be the identical thing, okay? The multiplicative identity is one because when you multiply something by one, you get exactly what you started with. Three times one is three. Negative five times one, still negative five. X times one, it's still X. So this is what you can think to remember this. Identical, I'm sorry, identity equals identical number. They're almost the same words. Here's the distributive property. For the distributive property, you are distributing the number on the outside of the parentheses with every number on the inside of the parentheses. Or you're multiplying the number outside the parentheses by every number inside the parentheses. Okay? So here's a problem. 3 times the quantity x plus 8. That's how you read parentheses. If there's more than one item inside, you say times the quantity. So 3 times x is 3x. 3, 3 times 8 is 24. And since there's a plus in the middle and there's all positive numbers, our answer is 3x plus 24. Here's another problem. 5 times the quantity x plus y. Once again, you multiply what's on the outside of the parentheses by everything inside the parentheses. 5 times x is 5x. What's 5 times y? 5y. And since I don't know what x and y are, I can't combine anything. Same with this. I don't know what x is, so I can't add those together. Okay? 
What if they're all variables? A times the quantity B plus C. What's A times B? Well, I don't know what the numbers are, so it just ends up A times B plus A times C. I don't know what A or C are numerically, so I still just write down A times C, but I've gotten rid of the parentheses. What about subtraction? Can you do it with subtraction? Of course. 4 times X is 4X. 4 times negative 8, negative 32. And when you write it down as negative 32, you could read the problem still with the operation 4X minus 32. So distributive property is just a way to get rid of the parentheses. You multiply the number on the outside by every number on the inside. When do you use the properties? Why do you even have to know about them? You actually use them all the time. You're not even realizing it. You use it to make math easier. If I gave you this problem, 4 plus 89 plus 16, I look at it and say, oh, I can use the commutative property to change the order to make my addition easier. I'm going to bring the 16 over with the 4 because 4 plus 16, that's a nice number. So now my problem is 4 plus 16 plus 89, and I'm going to group those together using the associative property so I know what to do first. 4 plus 16 is 20. See, I grouped them so they're easier to do. 20 plus 89, 109. Sorry, 109. Here's an example with multiplication. Oh my gosh, and fractions. Don't worry, okay? 1 fourth times 9 times 12. I'm going to use the commutative property to make my division easier. I'm not doing division. I'm doing multiplication. Let's cross that word out, okay? So I don't want to redo this whole thing, so I'm just crossing that word out. I'm going to say commutative property is used to make this easier. So I'm going to group the 1 fourth with the 12 because I know that 4 goes into 12 evenly. That's where the division is. 4 divides into 12 easier. So um, now it's 1 fourth times 12 times 9. Okay, I group these together. Now before I multiply, I'm going to simplify. 4 is a factor of 12. 4 goes into itself once. 4 goes into 12 three times. Okay, now 1 times 3 is 3. Now my problem is just 3 times 9. 